<clears throat> spoiler warning for all of the MCU, actually. Hello, I'm the Infinity Theorist, Quay Spinoff Enthusiast, and Marvel Studios' Loki premieres next month. I thought, since I did last year with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, and that this is one of my high- that is one of my highest viewed videos, that I would do another prediction video. This time, for Loki. Alright, let's do it. Before we start, I just want to mention that Loki is the second MCU show in a row that is both a summer series and new episodes come out on Wednesdays. Uh, just wanted to mention that maybe they are trying to hint that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is canon, maybe they are trying to hint that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't canon because it takes place in another branch of the multiverse similar to Loki, though I do want the former to be true. <clears throat> My first prediction for the show is that Loki is going to die. Not our variant L1130, but some variant version of Loki in the multiverse will die. Think about it, he died in the, f the first Thor movie and survived. He died in Thor, The Dark World, and survived. He died in, in Avengers Infinity War and, well, he didn't survive, but got replaced by this new variant L1130. There are only two movies that he appeared in where he didn't die, the first Avengers film and Thor Ragnarok. He died immediately after act the Ragnarok post credit scene at the, at the beginning of Infinity War. Wouldn't it make sense that he would die in his own series, too? He may kill himself, he may see himself die, but I think, based on previous films he's appeared in, that a variant of Loki will die. My next prediction is more of a personal hope of mine than a prediction. Loki will travel through the multiverse and at least briefly end up in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. timeline, if that timeline is indeed different from the MCU. Hope it's not, though. There is no evidence for this, but this show, or Multiverse of Madness, would be the perfect time to reintroduce the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters. Actually, Disney Plus recently tweeted this, what, what you see on screen right now. Where are our Coulson stands at? At Clark Gregg, hashtag Loki Wednesdays. I guess there was evidence after all. Notice how it isn't Marvel themselves who tweeted this, because that would make sense. Marvel Entertainment just trying to keep a popular character relevant. No, this is a Disney Plus tweet. I will leave a link to the tweet in the description. Also, notice how Disney Plus uses the hashtags Loki Wednesdays. Does that mean what I think it means? Is the TVA going to use Coulson and the agents to set the timeline straight? I wouldn't doubt it. If they can use a Loki, they can use a Daisy or a Fitz or a Simmons or a Coulson or a Mac or a Yo-Yo. You get the point. They could especially use Fitzsimmons' creative brains. They could figure out a way for all the timelines to coexist without harming each other. And they could use a Daisy, a Daisy if things get messy. All three of these characters would be a real crowd pleaser. I know I would be pleased. Maybe in one of the TVA's alternate realities, we did get a quick spinoff, and I'm just sitting there working on an Infinity Theorist TV review being the happiest I've ever been. Of course, that is in our reality. But either way, I'm still thinking if we don't get any of these characters, I think we're still going to get at least a Colton cameo, even if it's just a memory, just because of this one tweet. My third prediction for Loki is that Loki will return as a, vo uh, a version of Mjolnir uh, back to the main MCU Earth 19999999. How else is Jane going to get the hammer for Love and Thunder? It wouldn't make too much sense if it came from Multiverse of Madness, would it? No, Loki is the only character who could deliver the hammer back to the main reality without question. I don't know exactly how, as he is probably not worthy. Nothing against that. Just saying, he's literally fought. The, he just literally just fought the Avengers. Maybe one of the TVA officials is worthy, and they take the hammer through realities. There are so many possible ways to bring this hammer back, and I am excited for all of them. My fourth prediction for the show is that Valkyrie will be an important character. In a TV spot with Entertainment Weekly, Tom Hiddleston, who plays Loki, did a video called Loki from A to Z. V was for Valkyrie. Hiddleston said that we would be seeing a lot more of Valkyrie. Maybe in his TV show. If any Exardian besides Thor could lift the hammer, it would be her. She's also the new leader of the Asgard. She could be the, the person to bring back the hammer into the main reality. If we see her, we could also get a Korg and Meek cameo, which would honestly just make the show... Better not saying the show won't be good, just saying I love this duo. Anyway, Valkyrie and Loki would make, would make sense, as much sense as Loki being in a Thor movie would. There are just characters that, they're just characters that make sense together. 
My fifth prediction is that the TVA, or at least one of the characters from the TVA, will end up being the hidden villain of the show. This is backed up by very little evidence and is just a gut feeling I have. I don't trust the TVA. It mostly comes from the trailer where one of the people from the TVA asks Mobius if he, if they can trust Loki. I know it doesn't seem like a suspicion I should have, but if you are asking about someone's trustworthiness behind their backs in the MCU, you might just be a villain. This could just end up like my GRC theory for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Though, the TVA could just have been written a certain way, in a way that se makes them not seem trustworthy when, in fact, they actually are. We'll all just have to wait for the show. My sixth prediction for Loki is that Loki will visit some of the alternate timelines created by either the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Avengers. Think about it. He needs to put the timelines back in order, so why not revive Jiang in the Season 7 timeline, or help Cap return the stones... The timeline needs fixing, and since that's Loki's job, we could see some familiar alternate realities. I'm really hoping, I'm really looking forward to this show, and I'm really hoping that this happens. My final prediction for Loki, the Loki Disney Plus series, is that we will get to see Loki going through the main MCU timeline. Maybe setting up titles like The Eternals, Spider-Man, No Way Home, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Ma Madness. We will get to see the MCU's past, similar to what we saw in Avengers Endgame. And we will get to relive some of our favorite, lo uh, favorite moments, most likely Loki's best moments. It will set up The Eternals by finally giving them a reason to interfere, No Way Home, and the Multiverse of Madness by opening up the multiverse, probably directly tying to WandaVision, and other MCU projects by bringing back one of the most popular characters in into the MCU. The timeline needs to be fixed, so why not throw a bit of fan service there, too? I'm just saying, I wouldn't mind Loki trying to figure out where the heck Daniel Suze is and why he isn't buried in the cemetery. I wouldn't mind a nice reference to the fact that agents of, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. still exist. I am very excited for Loki. Just a reminder, uh, guys, that these are predictions and hopes of mine. Do not take them as rumors or fact. We all remember the Mephisto incident of 2021. When fans were disappointed with WandaVision, the WandaVision finale... Because it didn't line up with their theories. I don't want another show to fall victim to that. I personally loved WandaVision and was only disappointed by the redesign of the Darkhold. Yes, I'm an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan. Yeah, theories are fun, but we have, have to remember they're just that. Theories. Nothing more. We can't go blaming the studio for not filling our theories. I feel like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier did a great job at expectation management, but that was a very good show. I feel like it did it as an especially good uh, expectation management because of the power, the Sharon Carter's the power broker theory actually happening. Anyway, Loki doesn't have that luxury. Just keep your hopes up. Don't keep your hope. Uh, just don't keep your hopes up. I mean, have fun with your theories, of course. That's why we theorize. That's why I mentioned the AOS stuff in this video. But make sure you remember that it isn't Marvel's fault if your theories are wrong. That's the flip side of theories. You need to be able to take the blame for your theories being wrong. Like how I went up to the fact that my GRC theory from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is wrong. They are not the real villains. Like how Eric Voss opens up to his the Mephisto theory is being wrong. Just remember, theorize responsibly. That's it. Just a little warning. Before I leave you, I just want to mention that I have a podcast, Infinity Theorist Unscripted Rants, I-T-U-R for short. Link to that is in the description. Hey, while you're in the description, just let me tell you about Infinity, Infinity 600, a project for a world record. Would you like to participate? It is completely free, and you will be in the longest video on YouTube. 600 people, 600 hours, we can do this. Three more things in the description, my live channel, my Instagram, and my TikTok. You are smart enough to know what all those are about. If you understand fan theories, you should understand social media. Anyway, uh, you can watch another video by clicking the top left, top right, and bottom left corner of the screen. But before you do that, click the bottom right corner of the screen and then click the bell to subscribe and get your notifications on so you can see more videos like this, uh, hopefully every week. And um, yeah, just see my review of Loki when Loki comes out and just see a lot of really cool stuff. A lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff coming soon, hopefully. And yeah, uh, I will see you guys next time, I guess. Goodbye.